my sister and I feel like we're makers. What we do is we make things with our hands. That's, that's the gift that was given to us and the knowledge that was given to us through watching our parents both being makers of their own. One thing, like growing up with all these objects that we did and, 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 the, and my dad being a sculptor, that sort of three-dimensional object and, and also that three-dimensional object that is adornment. And because that there's something very potent in, I mean, Terry just said that we're makers of things and, and it's not just like, oh, I'm going to make a, I don't know, a Afghan, you know, or I'm not going to, not that there aren't amazing Afghans out there, but it's like, there's, there's certain objects have power in them. And, and that's really interesting to me. And, and, you know, you have a painting and it, that can be really a potent and powerful thing. You have a sculpture that can be really potent and powerful thing, but something that's really accessible to most people is jewelry, is personal adornment. Obviously, I came out of a beadworking tradition. My, my grandmother was a beadworker. She supported her entire family, including the grandchildren that she raised uh, doing beadwork. She did not have a good education, and so it was the beadwork that supported her family. My mother supported our family selling beadwork and with her love of beadwork, so I have a really deep personal uh, connection to it. But beyond that, and this is something that developed as I continued to make beadwork, because I started off making beadwork in a traditional form, moccasins and bags and all that sort of thing. Now, I feel like um, beadwork is a medium for my stories, and I'm not locked into the traditional forms. When I have a really big question, I call mm -hmm. my sister. Like if there's something that's like it's knocking around in my head and I need help mm -hmm. figuring it out, I call her. It's not and, very often. <laughs> well, I know, but it's like yeah. the big, the yeah, big the things. Big I, I reach out to you when, yeah. when I'm like, all right, I didn't quite know how to get around this one. And I know Carrie, I need Carrie's perspective on this. Yeah. So. I think that that's definitely a two-way street and it's it like I said it's not very often but when we do and it's and not that we take each other's advice always but it's it's that thing of having someone else's perspective and somebody who's who knows your who knows your history you know yeah. the knows not just the not just the the um professional history but knows you like Personally, intimately yeah. deeply not only being from a different tribe, but being tutored at home, so we weren't, you know. And being half white. And being half white, so there was like all three of those things kind of had a. Um, I felt it, like an outsider. Yeah. My entire sure. life, I've always been. I've That's always it. felt like I've been on the outside, yeah. kind of looking in. And at first, it was like, you know, what the heck, you know, mom and dad. And then as I've gotten older, I'm like, yeah, this is a really good spot to, to be, be in. in. Yeah, yeah I is. really like being yeah. over yeah. here where. I don't quite fit, yeah. you know, and that it's a good what, place to be. Yeah, I think you, you can draw you, strength from it. You tend to care less what other people think. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is. You're kind of like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. they don't have to like it. <laughs>